So in the last video, we placed a robot onto the table. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to allow the robot to move around. If we go to our USDZ file, what you'll notice is that the asset came with an inbuilt animation. So USDZ files not just contains a 3D model, but it could also come bundled with their animations. So here, if I click play, you see there's an animation of the robot walking and the head moving around. So what we need to do then is let the robot's animation play and at the same time, move it forward in the C axis. So that way it will look like it's walking forward. So to do that, let's create a function called move. And this would accept a string called direction as its input parameter. So that's with the direction we want to move it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the direction string and add an appropriate code for each kind of movement. So the movement could be forward, back, left, or right. So we'll create a switch statement, which accepts uh, for the direction, and there'll be four cases. First, there'll be case forward, execute some code, and then there'll be case back, and case left, and finally, case right. Great, let's just indent that. So what happens if the command was to move forward? For that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the robot entity and choose the, there's a function called move to. So this moves an entity instantly to a new location given by transform. That's not what we want. We want to move it at a specific duration so that will slowly make the transition so that'll be this one so this accepts as input the two location so where do you want to move it to so this would be a transform and then relative to so which object relative to you want the movement to be and finally a duration to define the movement so firstly where do we want to move it to so we need to create a transform here so if we go up let's create a variable called where move to location and this would be of type transform now if you click on transform you'll see that a transform component has scale rotation and translation so rotation we'll use it to move left and right and translation which is the 3d coordinate xyz coordinates we'll use it to move forward and backward so what we want to do is take move to lock location which is a transform and get its translation, which is the x, y, and z coordinates. So for this, what we want to do is first take the current 3D position of the robot, wherever that robot is. So for that, take robot entity, get its transform and translation. So the robot's here, and then we want to move it forward about 20 centimeters. For that, we'll create a new 3D vector, and this will have x, y, z coordinates of 0, 0, and about 20 centimeters. So what this does is takes the robot's current 3D position and moves it forward by 20 centimeters. So that's the location we want to move to. Now let's add in that move to location into this move function. And then relative to, this would be, so we want the movement to be relative to the robot. So we're going to create the robot entity and the duration. Let's let's give about five seconds for the 20 centimeter movement to happen. So five seconds. So let's just click build to see if everything's okay. Of course, we need to add in the statements here. But here, the value of optional simd3 must be unwrapped to a value of type. So simd3 is uh, optional. Let's just force unwrap it then. Because we know it will have a translation. So that are sorted now let's just assign the rest of the switch statements what this will do is simply move the robot forward but it won't play the animation the walking animation so it won't look natural so next we also need to start the animation while it's moving forward so to do that we'll create a function called walk animation which accepts as input movement direction which would be of type 
sorry, movement duration of type uh, double. And what this will do is it will start the anim play the animation for this number of seconds. And because we, we want both the duration of the translation here and the animation to align, we'll create a common variable for these. So we'll create a variable called, oops, there was a duplicate there, there move duration of type double. And we'll replace the duration here with the same move duration. And this one would be the same as well. Let's create this function, the walk animation function. So for that, let's just close this move function and we'll create it below move function. So walk animation. And this would accept a variable called move duration of type double. And in here, what we want to do is simply play the animation that came bundled with the USDZ file. We can get access to this animation from the robot entity. So if let robot animation equals the robot entity object, and there's an option called available animations. So this would be the list of animations associated with entity. Because it's an array, we just want the first item. So we'll get the first one. And if such an animation exists, we'll execute some code in here. To play the animation, we'll take the robot entity, use the play animation method, and the animation would be the animation to play would be the robot animation, and we want it to repeat, so we'll create this one. So we want the animation to be of about the same duration as the movement. So that would be the move duration variable here. So we're going to assign that here, and the transition duration. We'll just put it as small, like 0.5 seconds. So when the animation is called, we don't want it to be paused in the beginning. We, we want it to play right away when the robot starts walking. So for that, start walk would be false. So that's great. So this is what happens if there is an animation. If not, just print no animation present. Which is not likely because we know that the USDC file as an animation, we've played it before. So that would be the walk animation method. Simply gets the animation from the USDZ file and plays it for a, the same duration as the walk duration. So now let's go back inside our move function. And here we'll, we need to replace it with the walk animation method we created. So the move duration would be the move duration variable we created here, the same one which is five seconds, if you look here. Oh, of course, I forgot we need to assign a value here. So I'm just going to create five here. So move duration to be five seconds. So that's the forward direction done. So for the backward direction, it's the same thing, but we just want to move back instead of forward. So we'll just copy paste the same code. And instead of moving forward 20 direction the Z axis, we'll just move backward and 20 direction, so negative. So that's for backward movement. So to move forward and back, we use the translation component of the transform. Now to rotate, we're going to use the rotation component. So for this, first we need to create a rotation angle. So we're going to use let rotate to angle. And this would be a quaternion. and an angle and an axis with respect to which we want to rotate. So the angle would be 90 degrees. We just want to rotate 90 degrees in the y-axis. So this angle is in radians, so we want to use a function that converts from degrees to radians because we're going to assign the rotation angle in degrees to make it more straightforward. So it's a function called glk math degrees to radians. This converts a degrees angle to radians. So we want it to rotate by 90 degrees, the equivalent radian value. And the axis, let's create a same D3 object. And here that would be x, y, sorry, same D3. And this would be an x, y, z. 
and we don't want to rotate respect to the x or z axis just the y axis so this would be 0 0 and 1 so this would be a quaternion that rotates the objects 90 degrees with respect to the y axis now to do the actual rotation we again get access to the robot entity and this time instead of move function we're going to set the orientation of the object so the orientation you can see it accepts a quaternion so we made a quaternion here and we're going to add that here so rotate to angle and we want to move it relative to the robot entity of course so that's how we turn left now to turn right again we just copy and paste this code and this time instead of rotating 90 degrees we rotate minus 90 degrees to move in the opposite direction so that's it we got code to move forward back left and right for the forward and back we choose the move function and set the translation of the transform for the left and right we set the orientation using a rotation angle and default we'll just type in print no movement commands great so that's our move function so we haven't called the move function yet so what we're going to do is we're going to hard code this into this session and later we'll use voice commands so for this session we're going to call move code just after we have placed uh, the object so we want the robot to start the movement and the walking animation right after placing the object in the real world so we're going to choose direction to forward and so now let's build it and you can see there's an error here so what's happening so it says store property move to location without initial value there's no initialization okay so we need to assign a value here so we're just going to create a transform object so that should search it and now it builds fine so here calling the load model returns a model entity apparently with the model entity it's quite it's the animations don't work so instead you want to call this as an entity so we'll use the entity function again but this time instead of load model we'll call load and this you can see throws and returns an entity not a model entity so we're going to load an entity named again robot and now of course we need to change this variable here as well the robot entity variable to, from model entity to entity and now if we click play again and of course we need to change that here as well in the place object method we are accepting an object as the model entity but this time we need to change to entity great so now if we click play it should show no errors and it should start working